did this very, very, because I started on the back page. So today, we're going to look at the different multiple choice questions for the topic that I have called visual displays of data. As you can see, it's, there's about four or five from each year. And we're going to try and figure out if they're asking the same thing. Um, this also is the free response, and I'm going to add on to that later, so we'll check that out. I just want to give you guys hints today. I do not want to give you answers to this. So we're going to start with question five. Basically, this question is trying to see if you can understand what standard deviation means. And if you remember standard deviation from the normal model, one standard deviation away would con constitute of about 67% of the data. So kind of have that rule in your head, somewhere around 70 or majority of the data should be within one standard deviation. So I just need you guys to go through, and remember it was about 70%, so I'm not saying everything, but mostly everything. And go through and do, where, figure out where your mean would be, where your middle would be, and then if you went over 2.5 seconds, would that be mostly everything? If you went over 10 seconds, is that mostly everything? If you went over 20 seconds, is that mostly everything? And again, by mostly everything, I'm saying about 70% of the data. Pick the one that would be the most appropriate for this question. This should go in, this should go in the same order as what you guys were going. Through. So we'll go to six. A graph is not shown. Uh, it's skewed to the left. Which of the following is the most uh, reasonable? So this may be one of those where skewed to the left, figure out my skewness as I skew to the left, what happens to the mean versus the median. Um, there's a document you can look up that's in the drive that talks about what happens. Um, what is the so definition of median? Is the median the average of the first quartile and the third quartile? Is that how we get it? Do we average out? We look at the quarter one, so say the quarter one was nine and quarter three was 11, we'd say the median is 10. Is that how we find the median? There are fewer selling prices between the first quartile and the median than there are between the median and the third quartile. This right here is a common theme that's uh, in all of these questions, where if you're talking about quartiles, you have to understand it's the percentage of data that's in the quartile. So between uh, the min and quarter one, it's 25% of the data. Quarter one and the median is 25% of the data. Uh, median and quarter three is 25%, and quarter three and the max is 25%. Uh, there are more selling prices that are less than the mean than selling prices that are greater than the mean. Um, so figure out where the median would be as compared to the mean and the median is your 50% point. Figure out if that's true. The value of maximum minus third quartile is less than the value of first quartile minus minimum. Um, I don't know. We'd have to think about that and how the data would stack up. So just think of what this could look like because they don't give you any values. They're just telling you what, and what has to be true. But what is the most reasonable? What would be the most reasonable thing you could say? Notice we're going through every single one for these, for these questions. You have to go through every single point. If a probability distribution is symmetric, boogie, 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 you can feel it. It's symmetric. Boogie, 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 boogie. Which of the following statements must be true? Not could be true, but must be true. Must it be normal? They're saying, is the only distribution that's symmetric normal? Must it be uniform? Must it be bimodal? Must the mean equal the median, and must the interquartile range equal the standard deviation? So think through that one. Four, we need our uh, outlier rule for this one, and that's what we need to do. So what's our outlier rule? Remember the outlier rule. You're going to need this. For an outlier, it's going to be either quarter one minus 1.5 IQR. Oh, 
we can do call to three plus the 1.5 still stays there just like the old one and the IQR which everybody knows who goes to school here that the IQR is the uh, interquartile range and the interquartile range would be the quarter three minus the quarter one. Oh, looky here, they have a lower quartile. That must be the smaller one. That must be the quarter one. And they have an upper quartile, a quarter three. I just realized that videos are forever. And maybe one day I don't want anybody to see this, but I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Oh, it doesn't change. The magic of technology. Oh, no, nah, I lost my memory. If you thought that, I could watch this. Huh? Huh? All right, so here is a common problem that you're going to get both in free response and in uh, multiple choice where you have two. You have two different box plots and you have to talk about them. Um, so, the basic idea of what you can do is just figure out where all the pieces are, all right? Remember, these are outliers. These little stars are outliers. So, my min would be this star, not here. First mistake. We're not minning right here. It's the star, right? My max is the star up here. It's not where the line goes. And my min is over here. And then just kind of label it, median. Quarter three, you got your max, you got your quarter one, your median, and your quarter three. And then read through and make sure that whatever you're reading is true. Remember your IQR, you don't even have to calculate it. If you want to know who has the bigger IQR, it's from here to here. So obviously this is bigger than that. Alright. Thus ends part one of the viewing pleasure by Mr. Berg. Later on tonight, please tune in to see part two.